hopefully this one um, won't hang me up again. But uh, so here, here's uh, essentially what I want to do. What I want to show you is how to use the physics engine Ooh. in kangaroo. Kangaroo. Yeah. Those are two different animals. I know. I know. Um, so kangaroo, if you look under the kangaroo tab, has a lot of really colorful icons. Um, so this one is actually really important. You see it gets a lot of real estate. It doesn't have anything underneath it because it's so important, I think. Um, so kangaroo physics. It's, uh, I don't think I need to describe it all that much, really. I mean, it's, it, 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 will, um, it will incorporate time into your form a little bit. You know, like if you have a draping surface, it'll kind of calculate the forces that are being applied to it, and you can actually animate the, the forces as well. Yes? You don't have kangaroo? Really? That's not good. Um, I think you're probably going to have to jump up here and, or, well, actually, shut it down, restart it first. If it's not on there when it reinitializes, then go to an another computer. All right. So here we go. Um, kangaroo, for this exercise, we're going to look at um, sort of just doing a dot pattern for timing. So what I, what I refer to this as is particle animation. And you can refer to it as such as well. Um, so I am going to draw here in the front view it's important to know that I'm doing it in the front view. I'm going to draw a curve that kind of looks like this. So sort of. I mean so. <laughs> OK. So reference that curve into Grasshopper. Set one curve, reference it. We're good to go. We are going to create a set of points on this curve that will drop at certain speeds. And then we can stop it and do a couple of other things. And this is just an introduction to the idea of physics in a, in a software and how timing works. Um, so when you, go in, when you uh, subdivide the curve, if you go under curve and division, you'll be able to get those multiple points along the curve. So. Um, curve division you plug the curve in and you can put a slider for how many points you want so zero is less than 25 that's what I'm going with you can do whatever you want I'll do 16 and the K input I think with it being a boolean toggle will determine whether or not you get straight segment lines to each of the points, if you want. So we have points as a list. And uh, we don't have to worry about tangents or parameters. Um, yeah, we're just going to work with points. So um, a lot of this is not intuitive. So you're kind of you're going to kind of just have to follow along, and then you'll see the whole the whole shebang when we get to it. But uh, <clears throat> when we uh, grab the points, we're going to need to also know the list length. So we need to know how many points. So you go into sets, list, list length. It's right there. Plug the points into that. Um, and then we're going to have to, uh, well, actually, leave that there. But we're going to go on a different strain first, actually. So uh, under kangaroo, we are going to need particle. So particle will communicate with kangaroo quite nicely. Um, let me drop in kangaroo physics 
and you'll see kind of what I mean. And I'll drop in particle, and you'll begin to understand what I'm talking about. So the physics engine will require force objects. So, you know, kind of like vectors have magnitude. So a direction and a force, right? Um, anchor points. Settings is kind of um, specific to kangaroo. Um, whoops, I don't think I wanted to do that. And then uh, geometry. So that would be, I think our points go into that. And then simulation reset. So simulation reset is important because it's an animation. And it will function, and then you can stop it, and then you can reset it, and then you can make it function again and get a different result and stop it, freeze it. Um, so, and then all of these particles, right? So we're gonna turn these po points into particles. We'll give them mass and we'll give them velocity, right? So the mass is a numerical value and velocity has direction and magnitude. Okay, um, so <clears throat> we need to plug in the list of points into the particle. And then we're going to need mass. And for us, our mass is going to be based off of our own manual input. And that looks like this. So if you go under params panel, So this um, panel, we're going to turn off multi-line data, and we'll double click, and we're just going to give this numerical values for mass. So if we have uh, one, two, three, and four, just pick a pattern. Uh, it doesn't really matter what that pattern is, but I'm going to say one, three, two, and four. The reason we needed this list length is because we're going to repeat that data a certain number of times so that it matches the number of points that we have. And that's done under set sequence repeat data. So the data that it's repeating is here. And the list length, 17, is there. And that gets plugged into mass. Okay. <clears throat> we got to do a couple more things here um, to get us going. But on the subject of... Um, So this one I don't think I can describe perfectly to you, but it creates a force on a point. And it's actually pretty simple. It has the point that it's applying to, and it has the magnitude of the force, magnitude and direction. So um, in this case, right, um, we can create a panel, turn off multi-line data, we're going to call this panel, if you right click on it at the top, you can call it whatever you want. So I'm going to call it gravity. Double click inside and I'll say, uh, what's 9.6? Actually, I think we want, I don't think it matters. I think you can leave multi-line data on. Huh? 
I don't think you have to change it. I think it'll work either way. So kangaroo under forces. Technically, technically we're working in feet, so this isn't really accurate, but 9.6, whatever, it's gravity. Um, and we need to give it a magnitude, right, because it's asking for a force. So we call it unit Z, and it's going to drop vertically. So under vector, vector, unit Z, we plug in 9.6, we plug that into force. That's good to go. Um, we take our points list, we plug that into points. That's good to go. And then what we have here are particle points and forces. So forces that are specifically mapped to points. And then we have the points themselves. So that's significant because we merge that information into one, and then we feed it into uh, the force objects. So under params and utility, no, sorry, that's uh, sets, tree. Under sets and tree, this is how you deal with you know, managing data input and output. So under tree, we're going to use merge, and you've seen that before. And we're going to merge particle and u-force. And we're going to plug that into force objects. And that list should be flattened. All right, so here, um, here's the part that's a little bit, oh, you can see kind of what's going on here, kind of. Uh, that's Z vertical. I think I'm going the wrong way. Oh. Yeah, so notice here in front, front view, you can see that the Z is actually carrying it vertically. If I just change my gravity value to negative, it'll go down, and that's what I want. All right, so this part is very, very important, guys. On the kangaroo physics engine, there's a couple of things that we need to be aware of. We don't have to worry too much about anchor points and settings and geometry yet. Uh, this is a pretty simple script. Um, what we do need to worry about is timing and resets. So a reset, when you see that little symbol there, that's a Boolean toggle. And if you go to params, under input, you can drop in a Boolean toggle. So the other thing that we have available to us, and this is a standard grasshopper feature, um, is a timer. So the timer is kind of neat. Um, you can set an interval for how often it updates. And when we pull off of the red arrow, you drop it onto the element that you want it to time, and that would be the kangaroo physics engine. <clears throat> now, what I suggest here is that you uh, update the interval, because one second is actually kind of a long time for this. If we want it to animate pretty smoothly, right-click it and go to interval and change it to something a little bit smaller, maybe like 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds or something like that. Now I actually think the settings, I don't know, it's been a while since I've done this one, so the settings one is 
empty kangaroo options parameter set one. Mm. Options. It might work. I don't know. All right, but let's try this. So if uh, if it's set correctly, I don't know if it is. Mine has errors. Yeah, that's what I did, and it worked. Yeah. So mine won't because I think my settings are messed up. Oh, here we go. Yeah, when you go back, to, that's what it is. So when you set it to true, it's it works fine. Um, it won't give you the error, but when you go back to false, you'll see that the animation starts. So if you look up on screen right now, when I double click back to false, you can see that they're dropping. And they go at the, the rate that you set it. Uh, just change change the toggle back to true, and then put it back to false again. <laughs> All right, so um, that about kind of wraps up your introduction to the idea of physics in Grasshopper. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do a um, elastic surface next. I called it particle animation. <laughs>